morning, let's go ahead and find our seats, take our hymn books this morning, turn to hymn number 323, Standing on the Promises, amen, let's all stand together on those promises, amen, we got those promises from our Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God, thankful that we can stand upon those promises this morning, hymn number 323, Standing on the Promises of Christ my King, Standing on the Promises. Every promise in the Word of God Amen. will come true, either today or in the future. Amen. Amen. We praise the Lord for that. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the heavens want to hear us by the living Word of God, I shall remain. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing. promises I cannot call. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Here we go. Standing on the promises I cannot call. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. promises to stand on. Can you imagine living life and not knowing one of God's promises? If someone asked you, hey, if you die today, do you know for sure heaven's your home and you had nothing to base that knowledge on? Not one verse, not one page from the word of God. Well, I hope I'm going to heaven. You know, I'm glad we've got something to stand on. Amen. You know what? Hey, this world wants to take the Bible out of the church. They want to take the Bible out of the school. They take the Bible out of the courthouse. Take the Bible out of your home. Take the Bible out of everything. Hey, now they got prayer. They got the Bible out of, you know, church. And they got the Ten Commandments out of the courtroom. Now they don't even want statues. Yeah. I mean, they're offended. They're offended by everything. Spent a few, few hours, just a few hours, uh, at the uh, North Texas uh, State Fair and Rodeo. They didn't want you to be around bulls and horses, pigs, people standing up saying they have feelings too. <laughs> I have feelings too. I feel like I like pork. I like bacon. I like pork chops. Amen. 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 I like steak, Amen. hamburgers. Yep. I have feelings too. T-bone steak, round steak, chop steak. <laughs> I like it all, right? And uh, Amen. hey, this whole wor this world is offended by everything. Yeah. And you know what? I'm just glad that I can live my life standing on the promises of God. And you know what? Let the world be offended all they want. I've got a hope that lies beyond this world. And thank the Lord for it. I hope you do too. hope you know that you know that uh, you've got some promises to stand on. Thank you for being here on this Lord's Day. And uh, almost in the uh, month of September, can you believe it? Right around the corner. And uh, appreciate you making it through the summer. 
It's already fall. How many kids, it's looking at some teenagers here. How many of you teenagers have already started school? Anybody? One, two, three, four. There it is, a hand. God bless you. I see that hand. They'll be praying for you. And uh, how many of you can't wait to start school? No hands go up. Look at that. And uh, hey, I was surprised parents didn't raise their hands. I can't wait for them to start school, right? And uh, uh, praise the Lord. Well, thank you for being here. Let's pray. Ask the Lord's blessings upon the morning service. And I uh, ask the Lord to meet with us this morning. And uh, Brother Robert's good to enjoy some time with you this week. And uh, he had to put up with me pretty much all week this week. And, uh, you know, he, he saw a side of me that he didn't think he'd ever see. It was the right side over here. And, uh, but no. <laughs> Brother Roberts, would you ask the Lord to meet with us today? Amen. Let me give you just a few announcements. You can go ahead and be seated there and uh, remind you just a few things. Coming up Wednesday night, this Wednesday night, it's been in the bulletin for the past few weeks, but just to make sure you're aware, we will have a missionary guest with us. Uh, Brother and Mrs. Nate Mortensen will be uh, with us, missionaries uh, to Honduras, and we're glad to have them with us. And uh, they'll, they'll be our guest this Wednesday night. So he'll be preaching and, and show his missionary uh, presentation. So you'll make sure you want, want to be here for that. And uh, if you've never met him or, or if you've never seen a missionary presentation or if you just care about people around the world. That's a good reason to show up and come, and so and uh, come and be a part. Uh, I, I, you say, what do you know about Honduras? Well, I don't know a whole lot, but I do know this. I remember years ago I was uh, working as a laborer for a brick mason and uh, mixing mud, carrying brick, all that stuff. It was hard work, one of the hardest jobs I've ever had physically. And uh, as I was working for him, there was a crew that, that, that he would sometimes hire that was led by a fellow by the name of Arturo Reyes. And Brother Reyes went, went to church with us, and uh, he was a bricklayer by trade. And he had a burden for his country. He was from Honduras, moved to the United States, and, and was able to start a business and provide for his family. But he had a burden for someone to go back home and preach to his people that they might be saved. And he would tell me about it. And he would tell me about, listen, he'd go to Honduras, and he said, man, you just, he, he said, I miss it. He said, you, you just kind of go down the roads, and there's mango trees everywhere. He said, you just reach up and grab one and eat it. Before I met Brother Reyes, I had never really eaten a mango. One day he gave me one. I said, how do you eat these things? He pulled out his pocket knife and showed me. He cut that thing in half, ripped it, and had, you know, ripped the skin off, and just as one of the most messiest fruit there are, right? And just took that thing and started just biting into it, and just mango juice just flowing all down your face. I didn't have a beard at the time, so otherwise it would have just stayed in my beard all day, and I just licked my beard all, and, you know, it was, it was good stuff. Boy, and so, and I'd say, man, you, you, just, you just have these, like, lying around everywhere in Honduras? He goes, well, not everywhere, but he said, there are a lot of mango trees. And he said, and they're not like the mangoes you have here. He said, they're like mangoes. And I was like, oh, wow. And he said, one day I want someone to go back to Honduras and, and preach. And I, and I remember talking to him saying, Brother Reyes, maybe God's calling you. In a matter of years, Brother Reyes went back to Honduras and he's down there, he, start, he bought some land, and he's, he's uh, building a camp for, for kids to come and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ in Honduras. And so I don't know a whole lot about the country, but I, every time I think of Honduras, that's what I think about Brother Reyes. And so looking forward to meeting a family that's planning on going down to Honduras and giving them the gospel, starting churches and uh, churches, hey, like this one. And uh, the only, only difference is they'll speak Spanish. Hello, right? It's Honduras. And so this Wednesday night, come and be a part. You'll want to be here, and I hope you'll be with us. And then be in prayer for our fall campaign starting next week, our fall campaign. And we'll have the uh, Rangers versus the Seals, right? And I don't know which team will win, the Rangers or the Seals. Seals! Oh. <laughs> Waiting for somebody to do that. And... Uh, and now, hey, when y'all start coming to church, you know, clapping like this, and uh, then, then we got problems, right? And uh, so we're looking forward to a, a great week and uh, our campaign to uh, Operation Rescue. And the goal is, what the objective is, for any mission you're going to do, you got to know your objective, right? And so for our SEALs and for our Rangers, hey, you're our special ops, and here's your objective. We're going to reach the lost and the unchurched. Man. That's our objective. Sure. The lost and the unchurched. Our objective is to reach the lost and the unchurched. Our objective is to reach the lost and the unchurched. You've got it. And so you say, but they're not in church anywhere. That's your objective. Get them. 
You said, but they don't know the Lord. That's your objective. Get them. You said, but there are members of such and such church around the corner. They know Jesus Christ and they're faithful in their church. As a matter of fact, they're a deacon. The objective is the lost and the unchurched, okay? We're not trying to steal people from other churches. Now, listen, if they don't know Jesus, they're in a church and they still don't know Christ as their Savior. Hey, they need to get in a church with preachers of the gospel, right? And uh, so that's what they need. Hey, they're lost. <laughs> and if, in, in my perspective, even though they're going to church, they're unchurched because they don't have the truth. And so, but hey, folks that are faithful in churches and we're not trying to, hey, we're going to steal every member uh, out of such and such Baptist church or, you know, around the corner. And no, no, that's not what we're trying to do. Right, I'm trying to reach the lost and the unchurched, and so hey, there might be some folks at work you know, you know, they're lost. Bring them. Hey, they're unchurched. Bring them. Hey, you might have somebody in your family lost, unchurched. Bring them, and that's our goal. You might be having a neighbor, and uh, hey, next week we're looking forward to scoring for a few points. And just again, reminder: it is a Sunday school campaign, so to count, they have to be here at what time? 10 o'clock. I was waiting for somebody to say, 10, 10. If they're here at 10, 10, you, if you tell them that, okay, let me give you some help. If you tell them, just be there by 10, 10. They will be here by 10, 15, and they will not count, okay? So tell them, be here at 10 o'clock. I need you here at 10 o'clock. And uh, if you tell them they can be late, they will be late. And so I promise you that. So just tell them, hey, I need you to be here by 10 o'clock to count. That way there's some leeway there. If they're here at 10.05, they still count. And uh, but a Sunday school campaign, be here by 10 o'clock and be a part of Sunday school. And we're looking forward to a great, great campaign and, uh, and a great end at, at the end there at the end of uh, October. So looking forward to these things. You be a part, do your part, and uh, make sure you help your team leaders. Who's leading the SEALs team? Brother Seaford, all right. Some of you know, know that. Others of you are still trying to figure out who's leading the Rangers team. Brother General Hop, right? And uh, that just has, has a ring to it, doesn't it? Admiral Seaford and, and General Hop. And uh, yeah, I, I've messed you up, Brother Chad. I did that Wednesday night, General. And. Uh, <laughs> And messed him up. Now everybody's going to be hopping. Hey, we're going to have one side of the church going up like this and the other side coming to church like this. And someone's going, what is wrong with those people? And, uh, hey, we're just... <laughs> Hey, we're just having a, having a good time in the Lord. So look forward to those times. Again, make sure to be here uh, Wednesday night for a missionary coming. Make sure to look at the rest of the announcements in the bulletin. All right. And even if you don't know what team you're on, you can come see me. I'll tell you. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and stand together. And yeah, take our hymn books again and turn to hymn number 502. 502 and can it be? Take some deep breaths. Use that diaphragm on this one because this is a good one. Amen. All right. Sing it out and can it be? saved. Right. Amen. Yeah. If not, wake up, get some coffee, all right? <laughs> Sing it out on that second verse. He left his father's throne. He left his father's throne above. Amen. Amen. Sing it out. He
Yeah, I know. That's all right. It's amazing when you sing if you open your mouth. I know it looks silly, uh, you know, like that, right? But that's how all that air gets out, right? Gotta get some air in. <laughs> Lift it up to the Lord on that last verse here. Long my imprisoned spirit. Long. verse again. So let's go ahead and greet one another this morning and shake hands. Amen.
seats. Let's pick up on that third verse. I did that on purpose so I could sing that. I love this song. I wish there was four verses in this book. Lift it up on that third verse. Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin at nature's nine. Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin at nature's nine. My night in his that Christ would come and die for you, then your heart has grown cold and hard. And uh, it's just, it's amazing to think that our, our God would become flesh, yeah. live here and endure the contradiction of sinners, yeah. would suffer for me. Yeah. I don't know about you. I know who I am. Yep. Sure. To think he would die for me. Yeah. Mm. That's why we're here this morning. Amen. To say, God, thank you so much. That's why we sing. Hey, that's why we give. Because he gave so much for us. And as we give this morning, let's ask the Lord to bless our offering. Brother Tim, glad to see you here this morning. And uh, did uh, I'm just asking out on whim here. Somebody asked me if I had a hanger. You might have. You got it. Okay. Your, okay, whose keys was it? Isaiah's keys. Oh. You see, so the way it was pronounced to me is like, hey, Brother Tim wanted to know if you had a hanger. And I said, Brother Tim did not lock his keys in that truck, did he? And uh, that's what I was thinking. And so I was going to ask. I didn't do that. I can just call on the There you go. For a cell phone. There we go. Next time, Isaiah, ask for a cell phone. And uh, you got one. All right. <laughs> And uh, you got to watch those manual locks. They lock on you, don't they? All by themselves. And, uh, boy, they, <laughs> thanks for helping him. Now that the truth comes out, amen. And, uh, <laughs> well, Brother Tim, thanks for helping him. Would you ask the Lord to help us in, in our giving?
Amen. Boy, we get the opportunity to sing. Sometimes we, we think singing's for us. It's not. It's for the Lord. Amen. That's what we're singing to when we sing this morning. Hymn number 72, before pastor comes and preaches, my Savior, first of all, let's stand together. Hymn number 72, when my life work is ended, Fanny Crosby wrote this song, amen. Praise the Lord for this. We can sing of my Savior, first of all, we to see when we, when we go through those pearly gates. See our Savior. Good stuff. Lift it up on that first verse. When my life work is ended and I cross the swelling tide. see our Savior. Amen. Amen. And we thank the Lord for that. Let's lift it up on that last verse. Through the gates to the city. Through the gates to the city. to be able to sing. And uh, th every time I th sing a Fanny Crosby hymn, I think of her and all the hymns that she wrote, and she would talk about seeing him. For those that don't know, Fanny Crosby was blind. And when she'd sing unto the Lord, and when she'd write songs in the hymns, she would think of the one day when she would see him face to face. Can you imagine that? The very first face you ever see is Christ. Never seeing a face before in all your entire existence and all your entire life, and his is the first. See, you and I, we've seen many faces, 
but I long to see his face first of all. Praise the Lord for that. Well, take your Bible this morning, 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, and, and uh, appreciate the songs. And I always enjoy watching how the Lord works. And uh, we've asked Brother Seifert to begin leading sing, singing on uh, Sunday morning. He's doing a great job there. And he picks the songs, by the way. I don't tell him what to sing. And uh, I want the Holy Spirit of God to move. And I love it when the Holy Spirit moves in his heart as with mine. And uh, so we sang about being redeemed just a moment ago. I, I stand redeemed right by his side. And uh, we'll thank the God for that. We sang, and can it be, right? Can it be that I should gain, right? As we consider this gift of salvation, we sang uh, this morning, standing on the promises. And isn't it good to have the promises? You say, how does all that kind of fit together? Well, it's going to kind of fit together in the message this morning because we're going to talk about a very precious, precious thing. You say, what's that? I'll show you in the Word of God here in just a moment. You found your place in 1 Peter chapter 1? Before we stand, I want to say to you, hey, it's exciting to have some new bus riders with us this morning. And uh, see if I can remember. I'm horrible with names, but I'm going to try. Is it Zaina? I got it right. All right. And uh, woo -hoo. And that's uh, good to have Zaina here. Hey, her, her brother, let's see, how many sisters and brothers do you have? Five, got five of them total. There, I think most of them are in children's church this morning. She's here away from brothers and sisters as the oldest, and she's excited about that, I can tell. And uh, how do you know she's excited? Because I have six, and when they get away from all the others, they're excited too, right? And uh, it was good to have her come as, and with her brothers and sisters on the, on the van this morning, and always exciting to see new van riders to come, and uh, we rejoice in that. Y'all make sure if you hadn't said hello to her, say hello to her, and so I'm glad too. It, also excited to see two teenage girls that said, you know what? She's not going to sit by herself. We're going to sit with her. And so thank you, ladies, for, for making sure that she has someone to sit with. And uh, those are good young ladies you're sitting uh, uh, in the middle of. And, well, for the most part. And you will learn this, too. Everything is Jacqueline McKenzie's fault. Uh, <laughs> And so it's a little joke in our teen department, and uh, everything is her fault. And now that we know that, Jay Quillen McAneasy, you're good to go. So, but it's good to have her here this morning. Good to have my in-laws here. If you've not met my in-laws, I will show you who, uh, who's responsible for the upbringing of my wife. And uh, anything, <laughs> anything you have to say, just talk to uh, Brother Mr. Shaddix here. And so they... they, they <laughs> And uh, we're grateful that they're here. Uh, here in a little while, Melody trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior during a junior camp. And uh, you, someone said, I thought she was already saved. And you know, there's many times as a child grows up in church, uh, they, under, they begin to understand salvation and, and they come to receive Christ. And, and then uh, they get a little bit older and then they look back and they say, you know what, I, I, it's, it's, it's not real. It's, it's a dream and they're not sure. And we don't leave a kid saying, hey, you got saved and baptized. And we don't tell them they got saved and baptized. That's the worst thing you can do is tell your kids, that, oh, no, you're saved. I remember when you got saved. No, you, they need to remember when they got saved. And uh, they need to know. And so we don't tell our kids, oh, yeah, you're saved. Yeah, you don't remember when you did. No, no I, I ask them. When they go, well, didn't I? You tell me. It's your salvation. You ever had to tell somebody they're married? I hope not. Right? And just like that, hey, you shouldn't have to tell somebody they're saved. They ought, to, they ought to know themselves. And at junior camp, Melody came. And you said, why didn't you baptize her earlier? Because I wanted that to solidify in her mind when, uh, with our kids. And not just mine, but even with yours. Hey, a lot of times we'll let it kind of linger for a little while. And then we'll ask them about that. And if that salvation is not real, I don't want to give them a false pretense of salvation. Oh, yeah, I'm saved. How do you know? Because I got baptized. Just because you got baptized doesn't mean you're saved. And so, uh, so she, later on she'll come to get uh, baptized, and that's why my in-laws are here. They didn't come to see us; they come to see the kids. And uh, but that's what grandparents do. And so, no, we love them. Glad that they're here this morning. First Peter chapter one. You find your place there. I was trying to give you uh, time to find the table of contents if Peter was hiding from you. And First uh, Peter chapter one. Look with me at, at verse one as as we begin reading this morning. The Bible says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, uh, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit and obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed uh, be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope I have in my Bible underlined those two words right there, a lively hope. 
You say, why do you have it underlined? Because I, I don't know about you, but it drives me crazy when I see a group of Christians gather together in his house, singing the songs of the faith, opening up the precious word of God, listening to the preaching of the precious word of God. And then listen, they, instead of having a lively hope, they have a dead hope. I just, I don't, I don't understand. And you say, well, you're, that's just your personality. Maybe it is, but I don't understand folks understanding the precious promises of the Word of God. Listen, singing, and can it be? Oh, listen, my Savior, first of all, and instead of having a lively hope, they sit there. I just don't get it. The Scripture says here, listen, according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, and undefiled, and, and that fadeth not away, reserved in where? <laughs> What's those last two words of that verse? Woo-wee. <laughs> oh, there's only 144,000 people going to heaven. You're telling me a whole, that, word, that verse is only written to 144,000 people? Then Peter's a liar. Because I received the gift of inheritance. And listen, I received the gift of eternal life. And the Bible says it's reserved in heaven for me. And uh, he says, look at verse 5, who are kept by the power of God Amen. through faith. And my salvation is not in me. It's in him. He keeps me saved unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice. I'm looking to see if there's any greatly rejoicing going on out there. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. Hey, listen, even though right now you may have a heavy heart, you should be able to greatly rejoice because of your salvation. And he says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, ye love. Do you love the Lord this morning? Yeah. Never seen him, but I love him. Yeah. Right? Whom having not seen, you love. In whom, though uh, now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied in the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed, and not in themselves, but unto, unto us, did, uh, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you, with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, with which things the angels desire to look into. Say, what is all that saying? Hey, the Old Testament, guess what they said? Christ is coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's going to die for your sins. Listen, that was the Old Testament. But for us, it happened. Amen. We saw it. He came. And by the way, he's coming again. Amen. He's coming again. And he says, wherefore? Gird up your loin, the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is, is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. By the way, that verse is still in the Word of God. And it says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, past the time of uh, your sojourning here in fear, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but, here's our text verse for this morning, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of, of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundations of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. I want to talk to you about what Peter says here, not the precious faith that, that we see in, uh, in, in verse 7, but I want to talk to you about the precious blood in verse 19. The precious blood. You ever just think about that blood? You ever just think about how it flowed down the cross of Calvary? 
You ever just think how it would flow out his forehead, out his back, his sides, his chest? You ever think about the nails that were pierced in his hands and his feet? Oh, preacher, I've heard that before. I know about Jesus dying. Listen, if you think about the Savior and how he died for you and it's just commonplace, there's something wrong. It ought never to be commonplace. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care how long you've been saved. To think about your Savior and his precious blood, it ought to stir your heart. How much he suffered. And for me. Let's talk about that precious blood this morning. Lord, I thank you for the day you've given us. Lord, the opportunity that we have to serve you. Lord, your precious book that's given to us that we might not only read it, but we can stand on its precious promises. And Lord, it's through your word that we know about the blood that was shed on our behalf. We know that wherefore by, by sin entered into the world and death by sin. Yet we go through your precious word and we see the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you so much for your blood that was shed. Lord, I know the majority of the folks here this morning, they've given testimony of salvation. The desire of the message this morning is not to, to preach that they're lost. But God, I, would you help us to remember what it costs for us to be saved. God, would you stir our hearts once again, acknowledging your sacrifice for our salvation. And Lord, may we not just leave here saying, wow, what a great price you paid. But God, would you help it to challenge us that because you sacrificed so much, it's but our reasonable service to live for you. Bless now the message. I ask you, you speak through me. And Lord, you speak to our hearts. Draw us closer to you, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The songwriter said here, let me turn, I grabbed the wrong hymn book here. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Now ransomed from sin and a new work begun. Sing praise to the Father and praise to the Son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved. Saved. Just think about that word. My sins are all pardoned. My guilt is all gone. Saved. Saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. The songwriter also said, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. All precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Another songwriter said, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Or are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? These are old hymns. These are hymns that used to be so familiar. Listen, people didn't need hymn books to sing them. There was a time when the folks would sing out, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Listen, you say, why did he repeat that? Just think about those words. Lose all their guilty stains. And sinners plunged beneath that blood lose all their guilty stains. Listen, there are times in our past, in our heritage, when the, the Baptist church and the Baptist faith used to be known as a bloody religion. The reason for it, because preachers stood up and preached about the blood of Jesus Christ. And listen, that precious blood that flowed down the cross of Calvary, that precious blood that cleansed our sins. And listen, as we preached about the blood, I'm glad to tell you this morning that that blood does no longer has to flow. Listen, it flowed down the cross and that payment that day was enough to save satisfy the God of heaven, and now we can be saved by the blood of the Lamb. Thank God for it. Listen, I'm here to tell you this morning, sometimes salvation becomes old hat. Are you on your way to heaven this morning? We get used to that, don't we? 
we get used to, well, yeah, I'm saved. We get used to hearing about Calvary. We get used to, hey, listen, the ritual that we go to church. Hey, listen, we don't even have to print an order of service. Everybody knows what to do. We come in, we sing a song, we sit, we pray, we sit down. We give announcements, we stand up, we sing a song, we pray, we give offering, or we shake hands. Oh, we, every time we forget that. But anyways, <laughs> hey, we shake hands and, and uh, we take up an offering, we sing another song. Hey, the preacher's going to read something. And we, we know our little format and, and we can almost do it without thinking. And shame on us for serving a God that shed his blood for us without ever thinking about that which we do. We ought to think. We ought to dwell upon the fact that he would love us so much to send his only begotten son. Listen, before the foundations of the world, the Bible says, before God ever formed man, before he ever said, let there be light, he, he knew that you and I would sin. The God of heaven had so much foreknowledge. He knew you would exist. He knew you would sin. And he said, you know what? It's worth it all to go ahead with my plan to create man. Bless you. Create man and listen, allow him to sin and send my son to shed his blood to pay for his sin. He said it was worth it for you. Peter is writing to a group of Christians, and listen, that are going through great persecution. For the book of 1 Peter, listen, there, there are Christians that are enduring great affliction. They're enduring great trials. And Paul, or excuse me, Peter's writing to them to endure these things. And listen, that their faith was precious, but he's reminding them, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed, in verse 18, with corruptible things as silver and gold, you cannot buy salvation. And he says, but with the precious blood of of Christ. I want to just remind you of that precious blood for a moment. I only have about seven points, but I might only give you three. Okay, six points. I took one off because I thought that's, that's too much. I might still only give you three this morning. I want you to think about the precious blood. First of all, you ever, when you think about the blood, do not forget it redeems us. It redeems us. Listen, redeemed how I love to proclaim it, the songwriter said. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Listen, I think some of you just don't realize what that word redeem means. Hey, redeem means to purchase back. It means to regain possession of a thing that's alienated. What do you mean alienated? What do you mean to purchase back? Do you realize that you and I, listen, when we were born, just like uh, the Harpers had a little baby this week, and you know what? That child belongs to God, doesn't it? Children are inheritance of the Lord. And every child that's been born, they belong to God. They're not our children. They're His children. And He gives them to us. To, he loans them to us to raise them for him. But one day you and I, we all, listen, we chose to sin, didn't we? And when we chose to sin, Satan stole us from our father. Our sin, listen, it caused us to be in a, in a relationship with God that was broken. And listen, a relationship with God that would cause us to die in a devil's hell. And yet the God that we serve loved us so much that he shed his blood to buy you back from sin. And now we are no longer of our father, the devil, as he would tell to that religious crowd, right? We belong to him. Right. He's our father. Red it redeems us. He bought us back. He bought us back from the pits of hell. He bought us back from the, the penalty of our sin. He bought us back to himself. All oh, the precious blood redeems us. And that's what Peter said. You're redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. Think with me about the Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9. Listen, in all eternity, the Bible says, they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy, talking about Jesus, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by Thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. You know, I'm glad to know that He didn't just die for Israel. Can you There's some folks that think stuff like that. Yeah. Hey, I'm glad to know he didn't just die for the Gentiles. There's other folks that think that. I'm glad to know he didn't just die for white people. Amen. There's people that think that. Yeah. And then there's, then there's the other extreme too. Well, he only died for black folks. Well, he only died for this race or that race or that nation. Hey, he didn't just die for Americans. Right. Right. By the way, America wasn't around when Jesus died, in case you didn't know that. He died for every nation, every kindred, every tongue, every person. 
It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how you were raised. It doesn't matter, listen, what happened in your past. It doesn't matter what you've done. Listen, he redeemed you by his precious blood. Amen. Bought us back. Whew. Wow. I, I think sometimes as Christians, we don't just realize what that means. Can you imagine? We were alienated from God, the Bible says. Separated. Our iniquities, the Bible says, separated us from our God in such a way where a holy God could not even look upon us. And to redeem us back to himself, Jesus shed his blood. Whew. Precious blood. Not only does it redeem us, hey, the Bible tells us it brings us nigh to God. That's an old Bible term. You said nigh to God, what does that mean? The Lord would oft times preach and he'd say the kingdom of God is nigh unto you. That word nigh means close. Right now, I'm not very nigh to Brother Tim. Matter of fact, Hey, in life, you, you, you ever just been in that situation where, hey, you used to be close with somebody and then something happens and you're no longer nigh? No, you've never been there, right? Can I say, hey, just remind you that when you sinned against God, when you chose to live against God, live against his word, hey, sin separated you from God. Yet the precious blood of Jesus, hey, the Bible says it brought us nigh unto him. It's a good thing I didn't give you a kiss on the forehead, right? <laughs> I'd have been nigh unto his finger, maybe. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 7, verse 19 tells us the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. What's that better hope? Well, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of of Christ. Listen, we don't see sin like we should. We just don't. My sin, how do I draw close to a holy God with sin in my life? By the blood of Christ. It's only by the blood of Christ. Hey, listen, when I was against God and away from God in my sins, there's no way a holy God would come close to me and defile his very presence. And yet the precious blood of Jesus is now laid upon my account. And now, listen, the Bible tells me because I'm saved, because that blood's been applied, I can come all the way to the throne of grace. Matter of fact, James would say, draw nigh unto God. And that's good right there. But then it gets better. James, he says this in the book of James. <laughs> Draw nigh unto God, and God will draw nigh unto you. It's not just the fact that I can get closer to God. Listen, you ever try to get close to somebody, and they take a step back? You step to them, and they go, whoa. And you're like, well, I've seen, hey, it's the Baptist handshaking time. There's somebody in the church, hey, and you're going, oh. Right? Is, hey, can you imagine one day we build a bigger auditorium and we see two people running around, laps around there, and there's one of them behind us, like, hey! <laughs> Run! <laughs> you never know, it may happen. The good news is when we try to draw close to God, He doesn't take a step back. The Bible says He draws nigh unto us. Why? The precious blood of Jesus. Wow! You mean if I want to get close to him, I can take a step closer and he'll take a step closer too? Yes. By the way, how many steps have you taken towards the Lord lately? <laughs> well, I'd be closer to God, but it just doesn't seem like he's doing anything in my life. How have you drawn closer to him? Matter of fact, when James said, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you, then he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. You know how you draw nigh to God? 
Hey, you get some things right, and he draws nigh to you. Oh, boy, that precious blood, it redeems us. It brings us nigh to God. Then it blots, oh, this is good, it blots out our sins. It's not just the fact that I'm bought with a price. Oh, that's great. It's not just the fact that I can get close to God. Wait a minute. The Bible tells us it blots out our sins. If this morning we open the record book of your life, and I know this is just a hymnal for now, but let's just say it was a record book of your life. Let's have a list of every sin you've committed. This is, this is volume one. of yesterday. <laughs> right? Think about that. I mean, honestly, God knows every sin we've ever committed, doesn't he? Yeah. Every one. Even the ones you don't know about. Oh, no, I know about every... No, you don't. There's times you sinned ignorantly. You didn't know it was against God's law, but it was, and God knew. Even the ones you're denying. Even the ones you say, well, that's not that bad. Though in his book it is. Page after page after page after page. The ones you committed on the way to church. Oh, come on. You can put your halos away. Come on. I'll say it again. The ones you committed on the way to church. The ones you committed after church, after you just got off the altar. You say, when is he going to quit turning those pages? <laughs> when you begin to get the point. You realize how many sins we have? And the Bible says this. Oh, think of Psalm 51, verse 8. The psalmist says, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. David in Psalm 51, listen, after he was caught in his sin, after he's trying to get right with God, he's praying, he's begging to God, would you help me to hear joy and gladness Hey, that the bones that thou hast broken, listen, there was a price for my sin and my life is tore up because of it. And that way I may rejoice again. And he's begging God, would you hide your face from my sins? Would you blot out my iniquity? He's pleading. Oh, yeah, the good news is, you ever pled for something you didn't get? Please, please. Hey, you ever go with your kids to Walmart and they're like, can I have this? No, please, no, please, no, please put it away. Sometimes, we, listen, if you could just illustrate the David for a moment, he's begging God, would you blot out my transgressions? Please, no, please, no, please, no. What would, what would you think about that kind of conversation? But here's the good news. Hey, in Isaiah, at chapter 43, verse 25, the Lord said this, I, even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Amen. <laughs> the Lord's... Satan, the accuser of the brethren, is going, yeah, I've got Nick's, his volume one of last hour right here. And the Lord's God, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. Nope. Nope. What are you talking about? Nope. Lord, you don't see that? You don't see that? Oh, you know what? Hey, we've got Brother Tim's in his truck. <laughs> Had to get a big truck to carry those volumes, right? Hey, I, I, you know, the accuser, still not enough, right? <laughs> you got about 15, 53 foot trailers out there with <laughs> volume one. <laughs> hey, that's what the accused of the that's his first hour, right? Hey, the accused, that's what he does. And God goes, no, don't remember that. No, mm -mm. no, 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 uh -uh. I will remember them no more. It's right there. No, I don't see, you know what? I just see the blood. I just see the blood. Right there, you can't see that. No, it just looks like blood to me. The precious blood of Jesus. Oh, can you imagine how, how infuriated Satan gets trying to accuse you to God when God says, no, nah, uh, forgiven, done. In Isaiah 44, 22, he says this, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy sins return unto me for I have redeemed thee. Whew. 
Boy, you ever seen the sun when it's blazing down the Texas heat, right? And that thick cloud covers the sun, and you're like, oh, thank you, Lord, for the cloud. Hey, as a thick cloud, he says, he blotted out our transgressions. Can't see it. Can't see it. Oh, and then he says this, look, ready? In Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. That's precious blood right there. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And can I say, the Lord did not just say that and then leave us on our own. Then he said, I will shed my blood for you to blot out every sin, volume after volume after volume. Whew. Now the Bible says we are made clean, washed white as snow. Mm. Maybe you just don't see your sin like you should. Well, right about now, listen, if your heart's not stirred, your stir, stir stick's broken. He's blotted out our transgression. Brother Tim, you said, How's, I've never seen a preacher so excited about the Bible before. This is what you said when you first came. Accuse me of being on crack. <laughs> this crack right here. <laughs> cracking the book open that's right <laughs> listen how do you get so excited about it because I know what he did for me Amen. I know I'm standing on the promises of Christ my Lord I know what he's done for me and can it be yes it is it's true I'm saved by, and I know it by the precious blood of Jesus oh consider what uh, Paul would say to the church in Colossae in Colossians chapter 2 he said in verse 13, and you, and by the way, put your name in there, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. You say, what in the world is he saying? Listen, all the things that were written against us, remember? Things written against us, listen, he nailed it to the cross. And he's triumphant. How, how's he triumphant over it? He nailed it to the cross, and then when he was taken off that cross, put into that, into that grave, listen, you, you know that Satan thought, yeah, got him. Ha ha. Listen, you only thought you won. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be king of this roost, right? I'm going to be the god of this world. And then one day, up from the grave he arose, right? And listen, that stone rolled away. Out comes Jesus Christ. And listen, you can't stop him. Why? He's God. And now, the old account is settled. Whew. Wow. Triumphing against principality. What is he talking about? Oh, Satan didn't want you saved. Maybe there's somebody here this morning. Listen, I don't care how long you've been in church. I, I don't care how long, oh, how much Bible you know. I, I, I don't care, listen, how many times you've done good deeds. If you've never personally trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you can't remember a time just like, listen, just like remembering when someone got married. Brother Eric, when did you get married? <laughs> Knew that was going to happen. <laughs> so I called on you on purpose. Hey, you might forget the date, but you better never forget the experience. Right? I got it. Got it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> he helped me out there. We had this planned earlier. And uh, hey, you might forget your anniversary, right? She doesn't. Don't get yourself in trouble now. Okay, Google. Yeah. Okay, Google, what's my anniversary? <laughs> Hello, Siri. Would you set a reminder four months in advance? <laughs> hey, you might forget the date, but you don't forget the time, do you? Same with your salvation. You might not remember the date. I, I know the date. You say, well, I don't remember my date. Do you remember the time? Do you remember saying, I do to Jesus Christ? 
Do you, I do receive you as my Savior. If you have not done that, listen, the principalities of this world are against you and want you to live in fear, want you to live in doubt. They don't, he, Satan does not want you to get saved at all. And the day you said, I do to Christ, you triumphed over Satan. How? By the blood of Christ. Whew. What precious blood. Oh, boy. Let me just give you a few more quickly. I'll just give it to you, run through it. Hey, the precious blood of Jesus, it also, it brings us peace. If you died today, you ever just think about that statement? I remember one time somebody said, you don't go to a nursing home and walk in the door and say, if you died today. <laughs> right? Bad way to witness, you know. Bro Brother Chad and I saw, saw a lady uh, yesterday. Uh, we knocked on the door. She didn't answer. And I could hear her in there. She was on the phone. And, 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 and I said, I, I didn't understand what she was saying. She was speaking Spanish, that's why. And uh, I, I didn't know. Really, I thought maybe somebody was in there caring for her. There were signs on the you know, door, oxygen in use and stuff like that. So I thought she was just, you know, I've been around nursing homes a while. They, they just say things. So I thought that's what it was. No, she was on the phone. She'd come out while we were knocking the door upstairs. Her health is not great. Struggling with some diabetes or, or, or uh, some arthritis. Husband struggling with diabetes. Talking to her. And looking at her and thinking, okay, you're, you're having health problems. You know, Brother Tim, I did not say to her, if you died today. <laughs> There's the right way to say things, right? But if you died today, where would you go? See, I have peace about that. Peace. The blood of Christ gives us peace. Hey, listen, I, 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 we went to, uh, to a church one day, and, and while we were visiting there, found out the, at the end of service that the pastor was in the middle of preaching a message, had a stroke in the middle of the message, sat down and asked, asked the assistant pastor, would you come finish the message? And went to his office. As he had the stroke after church, they rushed him to the ER in the ambulance. Two weeks later, he's dead. Never left the hospital. Listen, you don't know and I don't know when the time is going to come, but I know this. If the time is right now, if my heart stops beating now, guess what? I have peace in my heart that heaven's my home. How do you know that? And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him I say, whether there be things in earth or in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by the wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. I have peace with God through his blood. And I have the peace of God through his blood. If I die right now. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Hey, do I need to fill out a DNR? No. <laughs> do not take me back from heaven. That, you know, use those initials, right? Hey, I'm on my way to heaven. How about you? Why? By his blood. Well, that gives me peace. Gives me peace. But what if? I'm not worried about it. I have the peace of God. Not only does it give, it peace, give us peace, hey, the blood of Christ justifies us. We've already talked about, you know, wiping it all clean, right? But this is kind of a step further. Yeah. To be justified is to be declared righteous. For the force, I'm going to tease you for a second. He's surprised. We spent a few hours together this week. You came to church. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to think, after all we've done, God says you're righteous. He said, what did they do? Nothing. We <laughs> Actually, Brother Forrest didn't do anything but laugh. I'm the guilty one. All week. He said, well, what is he laughing at? Well, I've got stories <laughs> for another time. You got to come to church. See what you miss when you don't come to church? And you know what? God declares us righteous. Yeah. After everything that we really have done, yeah. God declares you as though you had done nothing wrong. Right. Yes, 
justified. The way I remember the definition of justified is justified never done it. Amen. They got it. All right. Hey, y'all give them a hand. They, uh, woo -hoo. You know, we got a peanut gallery here at Victory Baptist Church. We got a blonde gallery. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, justified. Oh, the Bible says, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Thank God I'm justified. Whew. You ever just stop and think about the blood? Peter said, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed, with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your father. You say, what does that mean? Listen, all the religion of the day, listen, all the things of the past that tradition told you, oh, yeah, you're going to heaven. Oh, yeah, you're saved because, oh, because you were baptized, because you were a church member, because, oh, we paid this and we did that. Oh, listen, that did not save you. But he said, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Are you on your way to heaven this morning? Preacher, I've, I've been a member of this church since this church began. What, what are you preaching a salvation message for? Because sometimes you forget it. It's, no, I don't ever forget it. I hate to tell you, but I've got a good vantage point. Yeah. Brother Seaver said, take your hymn book to hymn number 502. You opened it up and you sang. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain. For me who him to death pursued. Amazing love. <laughs> How can it be that thou, my God, just die for me? Amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, just die for me? He's going to sing verse 3 again? <laughs> Are you on your way to heaven? Yeah. Yeah, Listen, there, there ought to be something going on in here. Yeah. Oh, there ought to be something that was stirred up. Listen, you say, oh, well, that, oh, it's because that song. Oh, you could pick any song in here. Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of, of all na nature. Oh, thou God, uh, 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 oh, thou of God and man the Son, thee will I cherish, thee will I honor, thou my soul's glory, joy, and crown. You say, that doesn't say nothing about the blood. Hey, it's my Savior. Right. How did he save you? By his blood. You can go pick any song. Jesus loves the little children. I thought I'd get at least one amen out of that. Uh, are you a child? I'm not no child. Don't you call me a child. Uh, you have parents, don't you? You will always be a child. And I'm glad to be a child of God. Amen. Woo! You can pick any song. Oh, I like this one. It describes me. Little as much. <laughs> When God is in it. Yeah. Live or not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Oh, isn't it a joy to be saved tonight, today, tomorrow, yesterday, whenever it is? Maybe you don't know for sure you're saved. Maybe this morning as we preach this message, there's a voice in your heart that says you don't have that. Here's the good news. You can this morning. So how? I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not ready. Oh, you know, here's all it takes. Listen, we take the precious word of God and show you how to receive the precious gift of salvation. In a matter of minutes, you pass from death unto life. You don't have to make a speech. You don't have to turn over a new leaf. You don't have to make a commitment to God. Salvation is not about what you commit to God. It's about what he 
committed to you. He said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be some of you said it like you almost believed it. Almost. Shall be saved. I know. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten. Man, don't ever let this get old to you. The precious blood of Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning for your precious blood. And Lord, by it, we know we know through your word that we're redeemed. We can draw nigh to God. We know that our sins are blotted out. Lord, we know and have the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. We know, Lord, it's justified us in your sight. Oh, God, thank you for your blood. Thank you for your enduring of the cross suffering, Lord, our penalty for sin. Thank you for loving us so much. Help us, Lord, as we try to live in such a way that would honor you for that precious gift that flowed down Calvary's hill. Heads are bowed and eyes closed this morning. I wonder, can you honestly say, preacher, if I died in my seat just like that, I know that I know that I know heaven's my home. If you can say that this morning, would you give testimony by the uplifted hand? Preacher, I'm saved and I know it. God bless you all over the room. There's hands that are raised. You can put your hands down. I wonder if there's someone says, Preacher, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm not really, I'm not trying to live against God. I believe in Him, but I just don't know for sure heaven's my home. I mean, if something happened to me right now, I, I don't know for sure. Would you pray for me? I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to pray for you. Only you'll know and I'll know. Would you do the same? Would you just lift up your hand and put it back down and I'll see it. Preacher, I don't know for sure heaven's my home. Would you pray for me? Is there anybody here like that this morning? Would you pray for me? Anybody? I wonder if there's someone this morning said, Preacher, you know what? The blood has kind of become old hat in my life. I'm thankful for it, but the honest truth is I don't think about it like I should. Maybe when I read my Bible, I don't really acknowledge the fact that it was shed for me to be saved. I know it, but I've kind of gotten old. When I sing unto the Lord, and you know, I, I kind of forget all that he paid that I can be saved. The Lord spoke to my heart this morning. Would you pray for me? I see your hand. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. Would you pray for me? Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Yes, ma'am, I see yours. I kind of forget of all the stuff he endured, the suffering that he endured for me. Would you pray for me? Anyone else this morning? Lord, we thank you. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to hearts. And God, thank you for that wonderful gift of salvation. And this morning, Lord, would you help us as we acknowledge, Lord, what it cost for us to be saved. The fact that we can come and gather as Christians only is here because of that precious blood. The fact that we can even come to you in prayer is only because of the precious blood. That we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt heaven's our home is only because of that precious blood. And oh God, this morning, would you help us to remember your blood? I thank you for those, Lord, you spoke to their heart and maybe it's just kind of gotten old. Not that it's not important to us, but it's become commonplace. We can sing about the blood and it doesn't move us anymore. We read about the blood and it doesn't move us anymore. Maybe some in here, they even hear a message from your word about the blood and even their hearts not been stirred. Oh God, would you move in us? Would you help us to realize how much you cared for us as you shed your blood for us? God, would you help us to kneel at this altar once again? And Lord, let you soften our hearts. Help us to understand. Not only how much you loved us, but how much you sacrificed on our behalf. Thank you for your precious blood. In Jesus' name, amen.